Hey, what's up, everybody? Juan Martinez, a.k.a. Dr. Love. And I'm Stephanie Martinez, right? And you've just joined us on This Is Real. Man, it's been a minute. It feels like it's been a minute, even though shows are still going out, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, um, you know, I had an interesting uh, weekend. Welcome back, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I feel like... Traveling oh, in the yeah. last few uh, like weeks land go months. go yeah, land. Yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> so I, I, we talked Jet a little lag. bit about Africa and stuff, but we no, we didn't. Not really. Man, I've done some crazy. No, that's stuff. what I mean. Yeah, you've been kind of out yeah, there. Yeah, a little bit out there over <laughs> here. Um, but this weekend was really cool. Even though you know, yeah. So how would how this has looked like in the last month was we were in Africa for about ten days. We winded up going into the middle of nowhere. Mm. We were in a ro- remote spot. We landed in Kenya, but we were remo- in a remote <laughs> spot. <laughs> like r- 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 <laughs> in a remote spot. And um it was wild how like even out there, you know, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Deuteronomy eight and stuff, but I just saw Deuteronomy six and I saw the mm-hmm. need for discipleship and the need for families and all of this stuff because, you know, they were so ingrained in their culture that they could not see when we were saying something That's different, right? right? Yeah. And so we go out there and um, we come back, then we wind up doing a, a marriage conference in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's just interesting, right? People are people. No matter where yeah. you go, people are people in need of a savior. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're all in need of a savior. So we could go there and teach marriages what we teach here over there and it's the same problem mm-hmm. it's usually the same problem you know they might look a little different we yeah. like putting things in boxes culture is the same yeah. problem you yeah. know yeah. culture is a little different and so again ingrained in culture you know no matter where you go right mm-hmm. israel it's the same concept and then uh just recently uh it, it was me and ruthie's 13 year uh wedding anniversary <laughs> Which, you know, I don't know. I tell people, like, for me, bow, 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 bow. I don't know. It's a bam, bam, hallelujah. <laughs> and, you know, all the sound effects, put them all. <laughs> you know, like, to literally be married to a woman that I'm in love with and that we're constantly working on growing together yeah. is, like, huge coming from, yeah. like, you know, where I came from, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, that didn't exist. So it was because that was culturally right, too, right? Like, mm-hmm. my dad, you know... They never were like, you know, be with one woman. You know, it's like yeah. as many as you have, that yeah. makes you a man. You know, so you learn that stuff. Movies teach you that, you know. And I'll say I think it's pretty cool, too, that um, for, I guess, majority of that time also, you guys did started and have been in ministry together the entire time because Pastor Ruthie's been doing it yeah. with you from the start. From the and start. so it's not usually the case, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes maybe it's, you know, the man is the pastor or you know, or you guys come together and then decide to go into ministry or something like that, right? But you guys just kind of birthed to get wrapped in all the ministries and the radio and all of that together, you know? Yeah, while being married. Yeah, while being married. I mean, technically, what, like a couple, a few years in? Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that is super dope. And thank you. For taking the ride with us, because it's been oh, some me. journey. Oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you said you thank you for bringing us. it up. <laughs> yeah, no, you took you, you took a journey with us. Yeah. You, you believed when, I mean, you're still believing, but you believed when, like, we had never seen rain, right? Mm-hmm. We were like, you were like, yeah, this is going to happen. You know, we're like, <laughs> what's going to happen? When you yeah. came to the office for the first time, and she's like, what do you want me to do? She was like, ready? I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Throw out the trash? I, I mean, I don't know, because we had no concept of like what it even mm-hmm. looked like. And we were kind of like with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, like we didn't yeah. really have like people there. Or, like we were just like winging it, winging it, mm-hmm. you know? And it, and it was pretty, uh, sometimes I look at some of those days that were just so fruitful and mm-hmm. so, you know, I feel like sometimes you learn stuff and it messes you up. Yeah. So you kind of got to go yeah. back to the basics of what it really Not is. Not knowing anything and yeah. just knowing yeah, just being that okay with that. God is leading you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was we got a call on Saturday. We were going to go to the thing and, I had gone on a Zoom with some cowboys. I thought it was the weirdest thing in the planet, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but as I said, you know, the gospel's for everybody. So God had me prophesy to this gentleman, and uh, he he just thought like I had talked to some people, you know. That the the power of the word of God, right? When mm-hmm. it makes somebody scratch their head, he's like, "Did you talk to this guy?" I'm like, "No." Yeah. How did you know? Yeah. <laughs> did you talk to these people? Who told you? No. He's like, "Well, how did you do that?" Right. And so I was like, I'm, I'm, my job's real small. I'm a delivery boy. I don't ask questions. You know, mm-hmm. I just here, take this. Mm-hmm. And so um, he winds up inviting me to Las Vegas, mm-hmm. like on a last minute, like, could you fly out on this day? And so my beautiful wife was like, sure. I was, she's like, it's going to be an experience. As you've mm-hmm. never been to this kind of rodeo. Well, like, on that day was your anniversary day. On so. the day was my yeah. anniversary day. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And so I got my first pair of cowboy boots. 
Yeah. Come on. About time. Hold on. Now <laughs> you're ready for the rodeo because yeah. it's coming back around. around. Yeah. I don't know. I talked to Vinny. He's like, man, it's taking like 10 years. He's, I know. I've been asking for like three yeah, at least. You have. I just wasn't going to do it. But at this case, you know, was because I like just being who I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. There's this thing. I'm like, this is how I rock. You don't really want to wear other shoes in a rodeo anyways. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> They're going to get all jacked yeah, up. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did it. I did it Facts. for the purpose of reaching, you know, becoming all things to reach all men. Right. And mm -hmm. that was just. It was just amazing. It was amazing to preach. Um, so the whole outfit, God gave me this message like mm -hmm. five minutes before he wow. flipped it on me. He's like, you're going to talk about you have the cowboy boots. You got the Wranglers. You know, before I'll I spoke, that, yeah. I, I fit in. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knew. Only the guys that I would talk, you know. But everybody's looking at me, doing the whole, mm -hmm. you know, and everything, taking off the hat for Ruthie, right? And so we look straight up cowboys as long as I wasn't saying anything or doing anything that's yeah. supposed to be cowboys. Because they would have threw me like on a, on a, on a horse or something, yeah. I would have died, <laughs> right? So I, I was like, hey, when I winded up telling them, this is my first pair of boots. <laughs> you could tell the audience was like, <laughs> like weirded <laughs> out. And, but it, it came to the place that you could look like a cowboy all day long. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the results of a cowboy, you would not call me a cowboy. Yeah. You know, you I would just now nah, you ain't no cowboy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because the jeans were dope. I got that two X Pro, whatever. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you and know, them and cowboys are serious about their Oh no, they are. They Very. were like, you can't. You got to no, get know, the I professional. You know all this stuff, <laughs> and I mean, they they really lacing up. You yeah, know, yeah, they. Yeah. I met the guy from Wranglers over there. Mm -hmm. He actually gave me a pair and That's a shirt. Cool. Uh, George Strait shirt, you know, I wanted cool, to yeah, give me yeah. a George Strait shirt, you know, and I, I was like, man, but all of that doesn't make me a cowboy. Just as much as you could go to church, you mm -hmm. could look the part, you could, you, you could be praying, cross, you could you do could, the whole yeah. nine and, um, and not be one. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the gist of the message, you nice. know? And so, yeah, then we came back and, um, it was amazing. Come experience the love that will change your life every Sunday at Get Rap Church. Visit us at 23221 Alden Westfield Road in Spring, Texas, 77373 for three services at 9 a.m., 1015 a.m., and 12 p.m. Not in Houston, not a problem. Join us for our online service from anywhere in the world by downloading our free Get Rap TV app or by visiting Get Rap Church's YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check us out at Get Rap People on all social media platforms to stay up to date on everything happening at Get Rap Church. It was amazing. People got baptized after the message. The, the guy that I was talking to, you know, I'm going to keep him nameless and stuff, but... You know, everybody was in shock because he's this really big guy in like rodeo, mm -hmm. like huge guy. And so he, you know, that he got baptized in front of everybody. They were like wigging out. They were like yeah. tripping. I like, was like, yeah. They lowered a uh, paralyzed guy into the water. All mm -hmm. the cowboys came. It was dope. Yeah. I felt like I went back into the Bible and he was being lowered by the roof, wow. you know, through the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, that's kind of been, been mm -hmm. happening, you know. And so no matter where I go, I guess I've been on this thought. So I want you guys to help me out today, right? To all the real ones that really want to hear the truth. Oh, the letters. Shout out to you yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can get a shot of these right over <laughs> here. <laughs> um, yeah, so we appreciate you guys. There's like a huge, tremendous stack of letters. Uh, mm -hmm. We have opened quite Arizona. a few. Arizona. We haven't gotten to all of them just yet. But, um, I mean, we can say a couple of... Yeah. Uh, what do you got? Names here. We got a Jimmy Trejo, Andrew Chapa, uh, Hernan Cortez, Gerald Moody. We've got Dallas and El Paso mm -hmm. and Hobby <laughs> Unit, Gatesville. I got I got one from a brother named Juan, uh, aka Polo. I wrote you that. Yeah, no, I'm joking. Yeah, nah. <laughs> 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 That's what he said. Like, my name is Juan too. <laughs> Go ahead, give him a shout yeah, out. Shout out, hey Polo, man, Juan. We got your letter, bro. Thank you for writing us and for. Mm -hmm. Tuning in, miss you, man. We got letters from Quincy, Florida, Connecticut, yeah. French Camp, California, La Mesa, Texas, Dallas, yeah. Texas, Florida. Florida. You said Florida, right? Yeah, Florida, Monroe, mm -hmm. Washington. Come on, Florence, Arizona. <clears throat> you know McConnell that McConnell unit, we Ryan Tracy. Come on, yeah. we got all these letters Bell, now. Clemens, yep. So, we're gonna start to do try to do better because we haven't even checked the mailbox and this is two weeks ago this is yeah i'm gonna say this is and so with all the traveling and stuff we just want to tell you that we love you hey i want to shout out you know our sponsor isi without <laughs> isi we could not do what we do you know let me do my little 
got into an accident. <laughs> you know, it's like my favorite part right yeah. there, you know. And so we just want to give him a shout out for always partnering with us and believing in the vision to set the captives free. You know, yeah. they, they've just been an incredible help. And all those out there, because there's other people who have been sponsoring yep. and kind of like just coming alongside this vision, you know, to try to, we're always trying to raise, I think it's like the 18 grand, like, you know, I would love to be a few years in advance so we don't have to even worry about it. Yeah. So um, thank you. Thank you very appreciate much. appreciate you guys. So, yeah, we will um, get to all of these letters we're doing, you know, the best that we can right now. We're going to get Yeah, we're going to create a system. We are, yeah, because <laughs> it's kind of just us right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we are, we appreciate all the letters and the shout outs. So, appreciate you guys. You know, we got G it. in the studio mm-hmm. today. What Come up, on. G? G man. What up, G man? We Hombre. don't know. We got to give him. We, maybe <laughs> that's his name. We'll figure it out <laughs> as we continue to go. Yep. But um, Him. guess what? <laughs> so, I've been on this thing. You know, we're going to talk about Deuteronomy 8, but, you know, I've really been on Deuteronomy 6. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that, you know, this one, I think in the beginning, it says, remember the Lord in Deuteronomy 8. It starts off with remember the Lord. Mm -hmm. But like all I see this theme, which is kind of like always remember that it was the Lord, your God. And so because for some reason, I feel the theme throughout the Bible, even for us today, is that. You know, whether it's we fell or whatever happens, we forget or basically here it's more like, hey, you did these things. You're getting blessed in Deuteronomy 8. We're we're just going to read some of it and you're going to see like then all of a sudden they have wealth and then they forget Mm -hmm. that it was God. And they start living off of, I guess, what they think they can do to almost replace God. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why do you think that happens? Like, why do you think that? Um, all right. Um, let me. What do you think that they forget that? Yeah, that that we we start doing good, and all of a sudden, like, all right, Jesus, like, it's almost like we tell him follow us instead of us continually mm-hmm. following him. It's like when when because I've been, you know, I know we're we're talking to people that are incarcerated right now, not just behind bars, but out here. Yeah, and it's almost like we forget. Did we forget how bad it was? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, because we say, yo, that your A game got you into prison. Yeah. Like, your best idea was mm-hmm. a Friday night. You were chilling Thursday, Saturday, and you were like, this is a good idea. And maybe you were out here, and you're like, I'm not incarcerated. Nah, you keep, you're incarcerated because you keep winding up in the same relationships yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. it is that you keep winding up in the same thing. And yeah. it was a great idea. Ooh, man, I can't wait. I'm going to get with this dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go out partying or whatever it is. That was your A game. That, that the last time got you into a mess that you said, I need Jesus. Now mm-hmm. things got good. What happens? What winds up happening? What, what, what do you think happens? I think um, it's a shift in focus. I think when we get our eyes off of the creator and then we focus on the creation, like mm. the things that he provides for us or the places that he takes us or, you know, dreams or destinies that he reveals, um, then we forget that he's the one who made us and kind of uh just created everything right Mm -hmm. and so if it wasn't for him they wouldn't have even gotten out of egypt um and so for a lot of us when you were in your egypt Mm. you were focusing on god because everything else around you was horrendous right Mm -hmm. but then once you get out of there now you start looking around and saying like oh well you know money's going great and Mm. you know the house and this and that and so now all of a sudden you're looking around here and not looking up at him and so then you know it's easy to forget catastrophe Mm -hmm. that's the uh, that you can't call isi for that one you you know you gotta call the lord yeah yeah instead of uh still focusing your eyes on who he is Mm. and what he has done for you and how everything that he may have blessed you with, mm-hmm. you know, cause in, in some of those uh, verses, it just talks about how some of it, they didn't even work for it. <laughs> A lot of it, it wasn't even them. They were given the promised land of, you know, land that was already, um, you know, <sighs> bountiful and fruitful mm-hmm. that their ancestors didn't work for and they didn't work for, but they're in there enjoying it because of the promise that God gave generations before. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess nowadays the culture calls it privilege. I think sometimes we can be like that. Man, I don't know. I think it's, <laughs> I'm just thinking like, because <clears throat> if you look at um, the consistency 
in which we forget God. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it just didn't happen today. It just didn't happen in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Like it's ongoing. You know, Israel is consistently giving itself up to idols, forgetting yeah. about God, being saved, going back and forth, back. You know, even all the way until like Adam and Eve. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think it's just the fallen nature of of man. You know, I think Jeremiah says that. The heart is deceitful and wicked above all, you know, like who can who can understand it? And the nature that we are naturally inclined to is to be selfish. So it's not until we understand or until we get the revelation that I need something else. Yeah. You know, that we call to something else. But then it's so because of the nature of our heart. That's why he keeps, on, he keeps on saying, remember me, remember. Mm -hmm. He says right here, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built good houses and lived in them, and when your hearts and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply and, and all that you have multiplies, then your heart will become proud and you will forget your God. Like, it's almost like... Uh, I was looking at that verse, too. Be careful that your heart doesn't become proud. Yeah, it's almost like you, you can't forget. help it. Like, uh, unless you're, you know, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. And so because of that, we revert back to, like, well, I got this. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. or, or I don't... Uh, I'm good now. I'm done with the, the saving. I'm done with being needing to be saved, you know. But we forget that we not only do we need saving, but we also need lordship. Yeah. And I don't know, it's just the fallen nature of humanity. Look think, right after. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think that's why, you know, in, <clears throat> in verse 4, it talks about that. Because, you know, it's funny because I think of like, uh, I know we've talked about it before. Like you go into, uh, I'm <laughs> sure a lot of your home also was like this. <laughs> but if you grew up in like a Hispanic or a believer household, you know, all the the decorations are like scriptures or like yeah. something like that, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. And we think it's funny because we're like, oh, my God, mom, you know, it doesn't look, you know, it looks tacky or this or that. But in reality, it's what they're talking about here, you know, because he says it, it tells him to remember all the time and says, so commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these so commands. True. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting them up and you're when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands, wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Oh, good one, six now. Write Go them ahead. on the doorposts like of your house and <clears> on your <throat> gates. And so that's to me where I'm talking about like the focus, right? Yeah. So it's hard to lose focus of the God that took you out of your mess if you're repeating it again and again Amen. to your children, yeah. if you're talking about it when you're home, when you're talking about it when you're on your road. So yes, we have that nature of forgetting and to you know, kind of just look at the things and not look at the one who's who's providing. But if we follow the really the cry for Moses, right, to say, hey, you know, commit wholeheartedly, then we're doing these things. Yeah. And, and you see it a lot in the Jewish culture, too. Right. Because yeah. it's like they, they remember, they memorize, they do all of these things. And for us, it's like um, we'll just forget. <laughs> Yeah. You'll just yeah. forget. You'll you'll have it. Uh, you'll have Jesus save you as an event. And then you don't ever mention it you don't ever talk Bring about back, it you don't yeah. ever testify you don't ever give him your 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 waking moments or the moments before you go to sleep and stuff and so it's kind of like i mean the fact that it says put it on tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders yeah we'll like, give them i mean heart. i think we need the reminder you know all day long yeah look i like to this is roman i mean deuteronomy 8 it says remember that the lord your god led you on the entire journey so you know, because now we're talking about the wilderness part, right? Mm -hmm. The testing part. I like to say the wilderness part is where God shows you you. We want to thank all of our partners who support us. Because of you, This Is Real has a tremendous reach from Houston to Galveston and up to the Austin area. This show reaches over 100 prisons nationwide with over 500,000 inmates tuning in weekly to hear the good news through our radio show and the Pando app. To partner with us, visit JuanMartinez.tv or download the free Get Rap TV app. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I feel like you got out of slave, but now God's going to show you you in your heart. So here it says the entire journey, these 40 years in the wilderness so that he might humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you by letting you go hungry. Then you get then he gave you manna to eat, yeah. which you and your ancestors had not known. Never so that you. Yeah. Manna mm -hmm. is actually what is it? Right. Uh, to eat so that your ancestors had not known so that you might learn that man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord your clothing did not wear and your feet did not swell for 40 years keep in mind that the Lord your God has been dis disciplining you just as a man disciplines his son hmm. 
you know, I, I don't know. For me, and I always tell people, like, there was a, a season when I first got out, and I always try to tell people this, and it doesn't matter if you're incarcerated behind bars or you're out here and you went to church or you went somewhere and somebody told you about Jesus and you're about to come out of your Egypt. And so now the journey begins, right? Because you don't see that in the wilderness, there's that testing to God launching you to your destiny, right? You see Jesus going through the wilderness. It said the spirit led him into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And you see God pulling them out of Egypt. You know, their unbelief, boom, he's putting them in the wilderness again. We all have a wilderness part, mm -hmm. right? And it's not dictated on your time when you think it's done. Because in those times what we just read, it shows you that you're supposed to actually respond to God in those moments, right? Like, oh, I'm hungry. Lord, feed me. You know, you're yeah. supposed to go there. Not like, I could do this in my own strength. Yeah. And this Deuteronomy 8 saved my life. Yeah. Saved my life. The whole part of man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the mm -hmm. Lord. When I got out of prison, the when you first get out of slavery, that time where it was going to be totally different for me, because I could have picked up the phone. Most of the time, I either went back to what I knew or I went back wanting to really do the same thing over again, but saying to myself that I wasn't, but yeah. I got close enough to it that I did, if that makes any sense. You know, I'd, I'm going to move next door to my drug dealer, you know, like, yeah. like all that, right? So this is the first time that I was like, I'm not going to do any of those things. So I feel like my first nine months, I couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get like, I was just losing it, right? Like I was doing good you know, for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, you know, you have nothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, all these little voices like now, yeah. I feel like at nine months it broke. And while I was going through that, a, a Hispanic lady all the way from Memphis, Tennessee, who I had never met before, I was going to go over there and talk to a, a Honduran church, which is a really funny story, but I was going to go over there for the first time, just get a wild call because somebody knows somebody and they heard I got saved. Yeah. So like, come, come share. And so this lady calls me. She goes, I feel like the Lord Deuteronomio Ocho, right? And I was like, okay. She goes, Lelo, read it. And so I went to read it, and I felt like the Lord was saying, don't forget, you don't live by bread alone. So I had right. to live out that actual verse, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And he was humbling me. And some of you might think, like, why is it taking so long? I'm telling you, when you're in a certain place that it's taking a long time, it's because God is trying to mature you, and there's something in you. Like, if, if God was going to trust me again with finances, I would have to go through a season where finances meant nothing. Yeah. I would have to go through a season. The season of the radio was a wilderness season uh, uh, when we used to go to the studio. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, it was just me and a microphone, and the coolness had went away, and it was only me on Saturday night. I was giving up my time. I was giving up my finances. I would go like, is anybody listening? I wanted to quit. My wife wouldn't let me quit. I feel like all of those things are to really show you that maybe there's a problem with you, and if he was to give it to you too early, you yeah. would mess it up. Right. Yeah, it would probably destroy you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you would get prideful. Yeah. You would get prideful. And then you'd forget. And then you're like, man, <laughs> totally. Because this is what he's kind of telling us, right? Yeah. That's exactly what he's saying. Yeah. And so I think a lot proud. of times when we come out of that, we don't, like, they say uh, fasting without reading and praying is, is dieting. Diet, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's a little slogan everybody's saying now, right? But the truth is that when you're fasting, it's to get you, like, closer to the Lord is yeah. to get you in tune with God and in those moments it's not saying that you're not going to get hungry it's not saying that you're not going to get hangry that day it's right. not saying it's to try to get you to practice that when your flesh is desiring something mm -hmm. you would respond to Jesus yeah. and yeah. not towards your flesh yeah. Yeah. right so I don't know I, I like that stuff I think a lot of times when we're thinking about this verse or I, I just see it, and I see that a lot yeah. in today's time. Like, I see, you know, you were doing all this Jesus stuff, right? Well, so they say, right? Because it's not really, I think we separate that too. Like, mm -hmm. like we kind of go like, okay, this is like my church and Jesus stuff, and then this over here is more like, it's like two different lives. Right. That's, not a, that's not accurate. It's an identity issue. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's like you're, not, you don't, you're not living as a Christian. You're living as doing Christianity. Doing Christianity. So you're doing things that you feel are christian -y, but you don't believe wholeheartedly that you are. I was telling this to somebody at the church Sunday because they were yeah. like, bro, I just, you know, when you were speaking about the altar, like, oh. he, he was like, bro, he was just everything that he said, you know, and I was, the Lord let me ask him, but why? Like, why do you think that that's going on with you? 
and he's like, I don't, I don't know. I never asked myself why. And and I don't know, as I was talking to him, I was like, I think that what happens is that the enemy, the 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 fiery darts are always coming. Mm-hmm. You know, the 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 doubt of like tomorrow. Let's say yesterday you cussed. Or the day before that, you you looked at porn or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. and there's always that voice. See, you're not a Christian. Right. See, mm. see, see. And then sometimes it's so loud that you believe it. Mm-hmm. You believe, man. You know I'm not. So because you believe that you're not, you won't do. You won't live as. Right. And now because you believe that you you're not, and you're trying to live as, your life becomes empowered by works. So you're doing something to become, as opposed to as you are, so you do. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge. Like that a lot of us face is that we th- that voice gets really loud and we submit and subject ourselves mm-hmm. to it. Then now we find ourselves trying to do things to prove that we are Christians or to make up for the bad that we did. Or, and we do it in relationships. When we, hurt, when we hurt our spouses or when we hurt somebody, we try to do something to make up for what we did that was mm-hmm, wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. And it's something that I think that we just naturally, in, not, naturally are, are inclined to do. So to, uh, to really catch the fact that, hey, you are a son whether you're sitting right there doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, bro, standing right here at the altar, you're a son. Yeah. You're like, believe that. Believe that you're a son because of the blood of Jesus, because of what he did for you at the cross, because the work is finished. It is done. And then have faith. That's why you, you live by faith, not by sight. You live in the fact in the faith that you are forgiven, so you live forgiven. You're justified. You're set free. Like, you're empowered. You're a son. And because of those things, you live a certain way and you like to do certain things. It's not always going to be the case because sometimes you don't. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray. You yeah. don't. But because you are, you, you're you empowered to. You yeah. Know what I mean? and, no, no, totally. Because then you want to find out more what the Father's saying, right? Facts, like, yeah. it, it comes from this natural relationship. And um, I think, you know, here lately I've also been uh, just really thinking about there's a lot of people who could teach but not many fathers. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, you gotta be, and I think we've talked about this a lot, like I've seen some of the things on, on our YouTube channel that kind of people like the whole offense thing and friendships <laughs> and all that, like they, they're liking that stuff a lot. And it's, you, you have to be able to be okay with, hey, this is what we do, come, coming out, even if it feels weird, right? Yeah, yeah. Cause it's gonna feel weird. Like right. the truth is you've never lived that way. So yeah. now I'm like, live like this. And yeah. it's like, like what? You get all these Weird. thoughts like I feel like a punk, I feel like this, <laughs> especially if you come from that straight from the from the hood. Yeah. It's like the, your first thought is why are you telling me what to t-? like cuz you already rebe- you were rebellious, yeah. bro. You you actually wanted to check every quota check, you yeah. know. Now it's a real quota <laughs> check cuz Jesus wants to check your quota, you know. Yeah, facts. And um I think because everything is so new. I love what he says in 16 or well, really from like 12 all the way down. But he said, he fed you in the wilderness with manna. He reminds him again, which your ancestors had not known in order to humble and test you. So he says this a couple of times throughout this verse. Mm-hmm. So that in the end, he might cause you to prosper. You, s- you may say to yourself, my power and my own ability have gained this wealth mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? But remember that the Lord your God gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant. <laughs> He swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve him and bow and worship to them, I testify against you today hmm. that you will certainly perish. Like that is like so powerful to me because this is kind of what we were saying before. I feel like we, ha- we have tendencies to get prideful and go like, I did this. Yeah. No. <laughs> you, you, what are you talking about? Yeah. When when Jesus rescued you, let, let's say from from that Egypt, that slavery mindset when you were a slave to sin, when he rescued you from that, when he got you out of there, you started taking Jesus steps. Mm-hmm. That's that church friends, you know, even and I know we talk about this a lot, but even when you were tripping, mm-hmm. the people that were walking with God that were coming around you to kind of help you to get you out of that, whatever, all of a sudden you're like, I know. You know, yeah. it's like you get this just because you got the revelation <laughs> today, we've been praying for you for like three years. We've been trying to walk by you. We've been still consistent at doing the things that we're trying to get you to do now. Yeah. And then it's like we hit Christian teenagerism. Yeah. You know, we're like, I know what. No, you don't. You you actually sucked. <laughs> you, you actually were a slave to sin. Your best ideas were no good. You didn't know how to have a relationship. Yeah. You didn't know how to handle money. You didn't know, you didn't know how to do none of that. Yeah. And so you started taking some Jesus steps and all of a sudden you... 
you start learning how to do some of that stuff. Or God starts to take you into this land. You got a little milk, a little honey there. You know, you got all this stuff going on. And it's yeah. like you totally forget. I think this is what I was saying last Sunday. Uh, like, have you forgotten what you came out of? Because he's constantly reminding them, like, don't you remember, like, Stephanie? Yeah. Like, when you were crying out to me because of your life? Mm -hmm. Now it's like, did you forget? Yeah. yeah. Like, you'd still be a slave, you know? I think sometimes we get, like, um, we get into it because you were talking about being instead of, like, doing, and it's not, you know, this... I don't know. I think of like a career, right? When they're like, oh, this is going to be my stepping stone. So I'm going to go work this job or make this money real quick so that I can do this. Or even in like health and, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to take this pill so I can lose this weight. And you just want <laughs> results yeah. really fast. So you just That's did it. the things that you wanted because you see goals that you want to attain hmm. instead of seeing that it's not because of what he wants to give you. It's because of his covenant that he <laughs> is going to get fulfilled. But you're looking at the things yeah, or the good. results or the, you know, all these different things. And mm -hmm. that's what you're focusing on. And so the second that you get those, you forget who God is. You weren't actually walking in, you know, sonship and all of that. And so then I feel like it's a cycle. Like we talk about people who are, aren't incarcerated in the physical but they're incarcerated in their mind yeah that you just become a uh, like a cycle of okay well G using jesus as a lifeline i of thought like, you were gonna say using g i'm like what no using <laughs> jesus as a lifeline of like okay i'm gonna go to church serve do all this because i need a job mm -hmm. then you get a job Ooh. and then you forget all these things and now you're like no i'm good i'm doing great blah blah, blah. and then all of a sudden you lose a job and now you're like, oh, okay, well, now I need Jesus. Jesus. Now I'm yeah. going to start, you know, serve, go to church, pray, do all the things because I need to get these finances. Then you get the finances and you forget all of those things. Mm. And so it's like you he's just, just put savior. the thing on for the quick fix, yeah. thinking that that's what God is about. But he's not because he, you know, when we read this, it's like, yo, he's got a land of milk and honey for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're over here tripping for, uh, you know, Cheerios. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got the whole factory over there for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I read a thing this morning that said to be prideful is to lie to yourself about yourself. Yeah, that's so true. To be prideful is to lie to yourself about yourself. Because mm -hmm. the, here's the truth. So let's say, because I, I see this too. Mm -hmm. Well, like, yeah, you know, your covenant, like, like when you become wealthy, are you ready to take your relationships to new heights? We'd like to invite you to the most anticipated event of the year, the Love Wins Conference. Join us February 9th and 10th for an unforgettable weekend filled with love, laughter, and growth. Whether you're newlyweds, celebrating years of bliss, or going through rough patches, this conference is designed to reignite the flame and strengthen the foundation of your relationship. We've put together a team of relationship experts who will share their wisdom and strategies for navigating the twists and turns of your marriage. From communication to intimacy, conflict resolution to emotional connection, our speakers will empower you with the tools you'll need for a lifelong fulfilling partnership. Get ready to roll up your sleeves and participate in interactive workshops where you'll dive deep into your relationship, uncover hidden truths, and explore new ways of building trust and intimacy. You'll learn practical techniques that will help transform your relationship for the better. And it's not just about learning, but also about creating memories together. Join us for our Love Wins Prom Night. It's designed to strengthen your connection and reignite the spark. This is a chance to break away from the daily grind and rediscover the joy of being in each other's arms. So mark your calendars and join us for a transformative weekend at the Love Wins Conference. Ignite the passion, deepen the connection, and build a love that will stand the test of time. Reserve your spot today and invest in your marriage so you too can say, Love, love wins. wins. Or you, be, or you start gaining. It's not really for you. Right. Amen. Like, like, I don't think he minds, like, as long as, because I always say, as long as it doesn't have, things don't have your heart, I don't yeah. think he minds you kind of having a good time and enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. But the, your ultimate mindset is that when you create more wealth, it's really to build the kingdom. It's really yeah. to give it back, right? Amen. Like, to actually build people, neighborhoods, whatever it is, to build the kingdom according to how God sees that. It's not really like, well, I got all this money, you know, stashed yeah. under my thing. Like, like that's not really what I believe it's it, it's for. That's why he's like, you know, gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant. He swore right. to your ancestors. Like, the fact it, that, it's it's yep. yeah. So we have like, oh man, I'm making all this money now. I'm 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 doing really good now. And then mm -hmm. my question to you would be like, well, how much of that you're using to build the kingdom? Right. Mm -hmm. And how much of that are you using to build your kingdom? 
you know what's sad about that sometimes for me that mm -hmm. is like um god's principles apply all the time mm -hmm. and so what's sad for me is that the people in the world apply Can't biblical build. principles and they see those fruits not knowing they think that it's themselves but not knowing that well that's because god loves his people and he'll use anything, anything. right but then the people who aren't who claim to like you know be believers and all that will point the finger and be like oh well you know you shouldn't have this much money or you know what are you doing with this business and you should be giving and you should be this and that but yet in your own heart wherever you are you know you haven't applied those things and so i mean i think it's funny because you see like all those youtube channels and stuff of like um people giving away tons of things and i don't know i like those those are fun right because it's like oh they found someone random on the yeah. street and then because everyone gave mm -hmm. you know they got to build them a house or they did this or that and so it's like those people may or may not be proclaiming Christ, but they're doing what Christ calls people to do with their wealth, with their riches. And so they're they're gaining the fruit, right, of being a, a giver and being a good steward. Yet we're over here criticizing and looking and being like, oh, well, you know, believers shouldn't be wealthy or shouldn't have this or that or whatever. You know, and so to me, it's kind of just like, but his word is true. So if you actually read it, if yeah. you apply it for yourself and you see that man he's got so much for us that it's, really good. it's all about our posture of our heart then no matter what you think is enough for you he's always gonna sustain it you know yes all right so um you know i was just looking at some stuff like in nine mm -hmm. he actually says basically do not say to yourself the lord has brought me to take this position of land because of my righteousness right you, you, uh, here's the truth bro or says you mm -hmm. suck, and, yeah. and we all we all we all are nothing. They say, "Well, I can't do this." You're absolutely right. You cannot do it. You're absolutely right. You cannot. That is the truth. They're like, "What? Like you can't? He can." Yeah, man. He it's, will. <laughs> he, yeah, it, because it's according to his will. Like yeah. him through you, right? So you want to put a bow on it? Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? What, what What would you say to someone that was watching right now and they're like, "Man, uh, what would be the the theme here?" Because I, you know, when I think about like everything we were even talking about. Mm -hmm. This guy told me, uh, my driver, Jed, you know, big shout out. <laughs> but, you know, he was in the car and he said, you know, it's this story of this guy who abused his kids and all this stuff, like verbally and beat him and all that. And so later, the two boys winded up, you know, um, doing, going different Opposite ways. Direction. Uh huh. And he said, you know, that's one of the boys that said, you know, this guy got real successful. He was doing good in life. He said, well, what, what did you, uh, what did you, what, how'd you wind up like this? Yeah. And, you know, with a, with a father like that, he says exactly that. He goes, I learned what not to do mm -hmm. with this dad. And then the other one was on drugs, messing up and stuff like that. And so he's like, well, how can I have a different life? Look at the father I had. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like two grown yeah. in the same household that had different perspectives according to what. And God is always trying to give us a perspective of a father being there. Mm -hmm. right that's not the case you know what i'm saying like like he's always trying to give you this perspective and maybe you're out there and you're not really re really being real like in your heart it's desperately wicked above all things and and god is trying to show you uh how to mold your heart and for you to be humble enough to go man maybe i am making all this wealth and right. i'm not building the kingdom or maybe i'm getting prideful mm -hmm. uh, i'm very prideful i'm not really being honest with myself i always tell my kids if you lie to yourself you lie to everybody else yeah be real with you right yep. be real with you and so what would you say what's I mean, your I final thought verse five says think about it just as a parent disciplines a child the lord your god disciplines you for your own good mm -hmm. and so it's what you know pastor ernesto was talking about as well that it's just knowing who you are is for me the answer of everything that you might face deal with go through you know be given in this life because you know he talks about how it wasn't because you know they were the largest nation that he chose the israelites like no they were actually the smallest it was just because of who he is that he chose us so when you walk in that and you believe it then all all of the other things will come you know and so it's kind of just knowing that your identity in Christ is the greatest treasure that you have Amen. and he's going to take care of you as a good father because there's lots of fathers out there that maybe you're a great dad or maybe you're a great mom or maybe you it's wish good. that you were and you haven't been 
Well, just as much as you have that desire in your heart, how much more greater is the desire of the perfect father to say, you know what? I discipline really my good. kids. I bestow blessings on them, um, but I also correct them, you know, because I have my plans for them are really good. Man. Yeah. Even in the, like just to piggyback off what Stephanie said, um, he, he is a good father and not only does is he gonna take care of you he wants to mm-hmm. like, yeah. he got wants Who to he is, yeah. yeah he wants to love you he wants to to be there for you he wants to be your 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 strong tower he wants to be your, he wants to be everything and uh i think that you know for me what stands out is the proud the pride yeah. like yeah. because in our pride we take the we take the the, the, the steering wheel in my pride i want to drive in my All pride i want to I feel like it's it's my idea is better, and mm-hmm. I got the answer, and I can do this, and I'm gonna fix this, and you know I'm gonna f- find a way to to do that, and and the reality is that God wants you to be dependent of, of Him, mm-hmm. always, know? and that's that's where the power comes from, and it's, it's it's biblical, like in your weakness, His strength is made, you know, perfect, like that's yeah. you dependent on, on Him. Yeah. Like even even the very mm-hmm. breath that you breathe is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So without e- without God, we wouldn't even be able to breathe. So identifying in your life areas that you're not surrendering to God, that yeah. you're not allowing God to be God, that you're being God, that you're driving, that you have a a, a certain um, system or program that you're working for yourself. Identifying those areas and asking God to help you surrender because sometimes surrendering is not easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, especially if you're so accustomed to mending for yourself. And I think that's one of the battles uh, for myself that we fight from the street is that I had to get it how I lived. You know what I mean? It was like mm-hmm. almost survival mode. So it, it kind of creates this 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 mindset where like insurance I gotta get you know if I don't have it here I have it here I don't, you know what I mean type of thing when he's like hey, just trust me bro like yeah. like mm-hmm. you, you told Stop me the other day it, like know. hey trust me and I'll show you right not show me and I'll trust you mm. you know and and so identifying in your, the areas in your life where you're like show me and I'll trust you and and turn them into not nah, trust you and because I trust you I know you're gonna show me right. you know and 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 be willing to surrender be willing to to let God be God because when he when, when God's got God in your life like there's there's no limit there's no um capacity there's there's nothing that he can and will not do yeah and if you stumbled i feel like sometimes you know we all as humans you can have like this good stretch and then all of a sudden boom (laughs) how you respond to that is don't beat yourself up and condemn yourself Mm -hmm. right how you respond to that is you get back up and you start walking you keep walking with the lord man because i i hear that a lot as well and we all have areas where maybe you're like mm-hmm. rocking it, you know, mm-hmm. you you got like 10 years and all yeah. of a sudden that punches you in the face a little bit and you kind of like want to give up. Don't do that. In your humility, God will always exalt you. So right. get humble again, open up, talk about it and keep walking forward. Yeah. Thank you to all the real ones. Peace. And that's a wrap. Thank you. This is Real Family for joining us. You can be a part of the crew by following us on social media or writing us at P.O. Box 671-626, Houston, Texas 77267. And don't forget, stay real.